Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. It's great to have you join us again. I am Tyre Salam. This is what the show looks like. We're starting off with the World Cup qualifiers involving Nigeria Super Eagles. The list is out. 30 players have been listed by Gennot Roy for the matches against Liberia and Cape Verde. Also on the program at the FIBA Afro Basket Championship in Kigali, Rwanda, the Tigers will be facing Kenya in the second Group C game. Also on the show, this time around, in the world of football, Real Madrid have upped their bid for Kylian Mbappe in their attempt to sign the striker from PSG. So that's what the show looks like uh, today. Jude Olaniro joins me once again for this amazing trip around the world of sports. GD, always great to have you on the show. On the Friday, where there's a lot that's going to go down over the weekend. Yeah, so mm. it's always an exciting weekend in, in the world of sports, mm. from uh, Tokyo to um, Europe, where we'll be looking at um, uh, the fixtures for the weekend, as mm -hmm. well as um, last night's uh, UEFA draws, draws. Uh, yes, Champions League, and also uh, the FIFA World Cup uh, race is on. Um, we have the list, that mm. team list. It's good to see that some, some faces are back. Yep. And um, hopefully we can get um, the results that we need. Yeah, the required God, results. The required results. G G G I know if I let you go on, you're ready to uh, <laughs> sink your teeth mm. uh, straight away into that Super Eagles uh, list. But before then, let's check in on what's going on at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. You're welcome to our coverage of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics starting. Uh, let's give you updates uh, from uh, the events uh, that went down early this morning in rowing, uh, where Africa's first Paralympic rower was in action for Team Nigeria. I'm talking about Kingsley Ijoma. He finished in fourth position in hit two of the PR on men's singles calls. And that particular result wasn't enough to advance into the finals, but it still has one more chance uh, in the ripper charge. That's going to be uh, tomorrow. Elsewhere in table tennis, Ahmed Kolaosho lost uh, to his Chinese opponent, Zhao Ping, 3-1. Uh, that was in the round of 16, so results of the competition. And in the class 10 Group C results, Olufemi Alabi lost as well against Radovic uh, Philip, uh, three games to love, while... In the Group C women's category, Faith Obazwayi was also on uh, the losing side, three to love against Yang Wine. So, uh, not great news are coming from Tokyo concerning Team Nigeria for this morning. But yesterday morning, amazing news came out of Tokyo. Uh, Latifat Tijani won Nigeria's first gold medal. That was in the Paralympics, uh, in the para powerlifting. And um, we expected it all along, g -Day, that uh, uh, para powerlifting was going to give Nigeria uh, a few gold medals. And Latifat has opened the floodgates, hopefully. That's the um, area of um, the One minute. So when you check out... Um, what has been done in the time past, yep. you know that uh, um, is either it is powerlifting, athletics, these two mm -hmm. events are where we have a, a, a strength. strength. So, yeah. And uh, we are playing to a strength, mm -hmm. uh, even though some of our favorites, uh, you know, the likely suspects uh, have uh, fallen by the wayside. Like Yakubu, Yakubu, uh, Yakubu came, came, close. Yeah. came yeah. close. And the question well, is, no why would you uh, get the young man to the games on Wednesday when you knew he was going to uh, have an event on Thursday. You mm -hmm. know, that's, uh, I don't know why uh, we keep having, having such kind of issues, problems. Yeah. And, you know, and this is one of the, the one goal, just, we just lost one goal mm -hmm. because uh, the, the, it was just the one, unfortunately, just a point. Mm -hmm. That was what he missed. He couldn't was the get on the podium. Uh, uh, podium quite unfortunate for uh, Yakubu. Uh, they shock on, but then congratulations to, to Janet Latifata, one silver 
at the last Olympics in Rio. He's gone one step forward and out to the very top of the, of the podium to win gold uh, for Team uh, Nigeria. Austin O'Connorman is also ready to join us uh, from London. I imagine you're very excited as well to Austin. Good morning. It's great to have you on the show. What a great entire shout out to Jida and of course our viewers from all over the world. It's good to be on the show and I'm glad I joined when you were talking about Latifat Tijani and that good winning performance right there at the Paralympics and what a story she gave to us. I remember when I spoke to her winning silver in Rio means, means that she needs to consolidate on that effort in yeah. Tokyo and she did just that, you know, and she was so, so close to breaking that world record. And yeah. that's why when she was interviewed, she was like, she didn't know what happened to her, that she couldn't leave 217. Because mm. back home in Nigeria during training, she goes 121, 123. You know, so it tells you that there's still room for improvement. It tells you we need to do more to support these para power lifters. But what right. a story, even with 107 that she lifted, she was able to win gold for Team Nigeria. It's a sweet story, Tyler. Sweet story indeed. Uh, now let's take a listen to the champ herself, Latifa Tijani, speaking after winning gold for the country in the power powerlifting. Silver medal in Rio, and that uh, Rio 2016. I was crying when I take the good uh, silver. That the gold is mine, and I will collect my gold 2020 Olympic. And I thank God that Almighty Allah gave it to me. Ah, in fact, all oh, Nigeria, she had a happy old that if I do think I have gold medalist in Olympic, oh, they will be happy for me. And Nigeria, please, oh, prepare for me, oh. Yes, my mommy, my children, my my junior brother, and my senior brother. Everybody they will prepare for me and they will be happy with me because everybody is waiting for me to bring this gold. A very uh, obviously delighted Latifa Tijani after that gold medal winning performance uh, at the Tokyo Paralympics, uh, Austin. Uh, she says you guys should prepare for her. Okay, maybe not you, Nigerians, uh, since you're not in Nigeria at the moment. <laughs> yes, Tayo, we've always, you know, called for support for these athletes, you know, yeah. particularly um, this para uh, athletes. Tayo, you've been to the Special Olympics and you know mm -hmm. the sort of inspiring stories, you know, that Incredible. they tell. And that's why when they don't win, I don't go overboard. I just keep saying we need to support them because when you look at their condition, we look at the challenges that they go, that they've been through in life and still yep. deal with and they still come out to to give you good, you know, winning performance. You, you mm -hmm. definitely need to support them, you know. Let's also give a shout out to the legend of the sport, Yakuba Deshokan, who was right. also so close to being on the podium, but he finished fourth. These guys have been, you know, giving life a, a meaning through para power lifting. And that's why when we say support them, we know what we're talking about. She mentioned her children, family members. Some of them are breadwinners. Awesome. They support their family through this, you know, and they also tell an inspiring story because there are people who are probably down and thinking of you know that it's all over when you look at these guys be inspired absolutely it's all about our uh, inclusion as a matter of fact uh, one of the reasons why i really hoped uh, the tokyo 2020 games uh, uh wasn't totally cancelled was because of the paralympians uh, for a lot of them this is if not uh, the biggest highlights of their careers, mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. So, so it would have been a disaster uh, if the, the games were cancelled uh, totally. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, even though uh, they've had to compete, or they, they, they're having to compete uh, uh, in uh, situations that are not ideal, exactly. but then it's better than nothing. Exactly. And uh, it's, it's just fantastic uh, for uh, Team Nigeria and all the Paralympians out there. Yeah, as soon as... Um the announcement came that there was no going back for, yeah, for the, the games. normal games. Yeah. I knew if we had the um, the main Olympics, we we're definitely going to of have course. the Paralympics. And it's good to see that. And so back to the support that, he, that Latifat called, called for. Uh, Latifat, by the way, I want to believe he is, uh, she is rather, she is um, an Ogun State athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that, uh, that Ogun oh, State should be proud of, of her now. Of course. Because, of course. Uh, and uh, of course, that means that uh, we're saying that on, on, this, on this channel right now, that yeah. uh, when she's back, I want to see 
that um, Ogunste Ida really, they, you know, they do something special of for course. us because she is an ambassador of that state. Yep. And uh, I feel that the governor, um, because uh, I'm also privy to the, the fact that um, Toby Amazon, who is also, you know, he's also an Ogun State person, and I was expecting that, you know, they will get some supports. Mm -hmm. I know that there are some states who have uh, um, taken over the welfare of some of those athletes, you know, mm -hmm. because the, government, the federal government can't do mm -hmm. everything. And, you know, there are some states that I expect. Um, I remember that Lagos did something for their athletes that went to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And now that the Paralympics um, is on, I want to believe that uh, there are some of these athletes that the states can also take over Why not? and do, do more for them. Why know, not? Uh, that's, over their welfare and all that. Yeah, you're spot on. And that's uh, over to the authorities as well, too. Um, historically, I mean, if you go to an Olympics uh, and you win laurels mm -hmm. for the country, you are bound to be rewarded uh, for your efforts. So I don't want to, uh, I want to believe that's the case. Uh, that's going to be the case uh, concerning Latifat uh, Tijanu. We wish uh, uh, the rest uh, of the Olympians, uh, the Paralympians, all the best uh, uh, in their competitions. Hopefully by the time we come back on Monday, we're talking about more gold medals for the country. We're still talking about the Paralympics. Let's uh, go over to swimming now where more world records continue to tumble uh, in the pool. Uh, these guys, despite all of the challenges, uh, uh, they're still finding ways uh, to uh, break world records. And that's what we saw uh, yesterday where China uh, beat their relay record by two and a half seconds. Belarus higher bulky and U.S. teenager Gia Pegolini also knocked around half of a second of their own times uh, to break uh, world records and win Paralympic go. Let's enjoy some of the highlights coming from the polls. Away from our Paralympics coverage, be sure to join us, of course, uh, on Monday uh, for more uh, updates on the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. Uh, let's go uh, move over now to uh, the FIBA Afro Baskets uh, in Kigali, Rwanda, and give you updates coming from that competition uh, with games played yesterday. We have very interesting results for you. Angola, they look like uh, a shadow of themselves. They've lost back to back now. Uh, but before I get to Angola, Guinea uh, were in action and they lost uh, by a single point against the Central African Republic. Akeverdi uh, couldn't follow up their victory, that stunning victory over Angola. They lost against Congo DR 66 to 70. Angola, like I said, the dwindling fortunes of the most decorated African nation in the past 29 editions, 11 time champions. Uh, the, the fortune continues to dwindle. They lost against Rwanda 68 to 71. And the star match of the day was between um, Egypt and Tunisia. And it was the defending champs that prevailed by six points in that particular game, 87 to 81. That's how it ended. But for today, it's all about the Tigers, Nigeria's men's national basketball team. They'll be in action against Kenya. They'll be looking to make it back-to-back -back wins in Group C. But before them, it's going to be Uganda taking on Cameroon. There's also Mali versus Cote d'Ivoire and South Sudan versus Senegal. Austin, I'm coming over to you. Hope you're ready. Adi Tigers versus Kenya later today. Fantastic victory in the very first game against Mali. But these Kenyans are not pushovers. We saw them during the qualifiers where they stunned Angola, even though Angola are not the team that they used to be, but it's still a very decent sign. For Kenya to beat them uh, tells you a bit uh, about uh, the team being led by Liz Mills, the only or uh, the first African or uh, the first woman uh, to lead a team to the FIBA Afro Baskets. That's really commendable, you know, Coach Liz Mills. She's done, you know, something remarkable with this Kenyan team. And that's why the D Tigers cannot afford to underrate them or be complacent in any form. Otherwise, they get stunned. And, and truly, even in their first match, though they lost, the Kenyans were, were distant, you know. So yeah. uh, they get better, you know, after every game. And with the D Tigers, they've seen our first match against Mali. They now know 
uh, some of the weaknesses of the team, and that's where Coach Mills uh, will be trying to, you know, capitalize on. So the D Tigers must come out and, you know, show their quality on paper easily mm. as a yep. pundit. You give it to the D Tigers, you know, that's it. It's a no brainer to even think that they won't win that one. But with yep. what we've seen, particularly how they slipped tire at some point in that match against Mali. Yep. You start getting worried. The, the defending was poor. They were attempting the trees and it wasn't going in. Mm. They weren't clicking and connecting properly. All those are works that they need to do. And we totally understand because of how they, they hurried to put this team together. Remember, we talked about it that it's going to show. Yep. Those guys just use experience and you know, individual brilliance, you know, to go out there and you know, to get the win against Mali. But I'm sure Coach Mike Brown has also identified those, those loopholes and will be trying to, you know, block them and put up a distant performance against Kenya today. We just want to wish the D-Tigers all the best. But we know that the biggest lesson out of this competition for Nigeria mm -hmm. is to get back home and start building. If you look at Egypt and Tunisia, look at how competitive that match was. Yeah. That was their league and that was their quality on display, Tayo. That's, and that's they have shown it from the day this competition started. So let's wish them all the best and see what they can do against Kenya. Indeed, Mike Brown, the coach uh, who's trying to win Nigeria's second AfroBasket title, has been speaking on that game against Kenya later today. Uh, they're well coached. You know, Coach Liz has done a nice job uh, taking over getting them organized, uh, getting them to play hard. Uh, they do uh, you know, a few tricky things here and there. They like to play zone when you have the bait, ball out of bounds underneath and, and do some other things. Uh, I'm not sure of the guy's name, but number nine is, is really good for him. I think he had 25 points last night. and He scored in a lot of different ways, so he's going to be a, a handful for us. Uh, but uh, they're, they're anxious to play us. <clears throat> they had a tough loss the other night they need to win this game uh in order to stay in the hunt so they're going to come out and they're going to throw everything at us and, and hopefully we can respond and, and get another win good to see that coach mike brown not underestimating the kenyans at all the kenyans have a very solid side they've got their players from diaspora as well too uh that help them to qualify for this competition but uh, if everything goes according to plan, uh, Nigeria should get a victory, uh, the second one in Group C at the end of fourth, four quarters uh, later today. We need to go on a break now. We'll come back. Uh, we've still got uh, more updates uh, coming from the FIBA Afro Basket. Of course, there's also uh, the transfer sagas involving Cristiano Ronaldo and Kylian Mbappe. We have all of the details for you. Join us again. I shoot the ball, uh, I shoot it at a high level. Uh, you know, my, my teammates and my coaches gave me confidence, gave me freedom to shoot the ball, to go out there and have fun. So, uh, you know, I just went out there and every shot I had that was a good shot, I took it. And, you know, it was, it paid off. I made it. As Benjamin Melogu, D Tiger small forwards, caught 18 points in Nigeria's first win against uh, Mali at the FIBA Afro Basket and hopes to replicate that particular form against uh, Kenya later uh, today. Before we leave the Afro Basket, let me get your thoughts uh, quickly uh, on Nigeria's chances of winning a second uh, Afro Basket title. Uh, out of 16 players that prosecuted the mm -hmm. qualifiers, only two. Uh, played and have made it to this particular competition. So obviously, uh, it's a very new team, and um, the group stage wasn't supposed to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So you expect them to successfully uh, move on into the next round. But it's in the medal rounds where mm -hmm. they get to take on the likes of Egypt, so Senegal, Tunisia, and Tunisia. Tunisia. That's where I foresee big, big problems. But like you said, you know, how do you um, how, how do you reconcile the fact that you had? Uh, only two of the team that only two of that the team 16. that qualified the yeah. 16 now that means we have to we're just building again mm -hmm. this squad it's not at the tournament that you begin to bring question mm -hmm. you build question mm -hmm. this are uh, the team spirits you know the chemistry should have been built before the championship so yeah. that's the problem we're going to have especially when we have we play teams like tunisia you just said egypt senegal mm -hmm. these are the teams that have been playing consistently together and uh, there's some other things that I noticed in that game against um, Mali. Mali. I noticed that uh, defense-wise, that team is struggling. You mm. know, they just... And you, how do you explain the fact that uh, 
The second quarter, the fourth quarter, these are crucial quarters, especially when you play for basketball. Yeah. And you throw away, you know, some of those things. Mm. That, as against a team like Mali. Mali is good again. But I want to see a remarkable difference, you know, mm. improvements on the part of um, the team this, when they play against uh, Kenya to know that maybe, like the uh, coach Mike Brown said, yep. there has been correction, correcting some of those things. Yeah. Know, if we don't do that, I'm afraid when we meet mm. the likes of the North African teams, mm. you know, they won bad. They're always there. Mm, they're always the there. Exactly. So, I mean, the defending chances. The, defending is, is, the chances that, the, mm. but, but the last time, but I, I think that, I don't know whether the NBV have actually set a target for Mike Brown. If we won silver the last time, I think we should go a step up. Uh, come on. That's, that's <laughs> it. Just, I mean, I, sense, I, I see where you're coming from, yeah, but we, uh, we got to keep things in perspective. Okay. Um, I, like I'm saying, I'm so, not expected. I just want to moderate my, yeah, even, my expectation. Exactly. But I think that's the best uh, approach uh, to all of this. Mm. That's the best approach. Uh, the situation are uh, not ideal at all. Five players in training camp. All the other players joined in Kigali Rwanda. Barely had enough time to train together. Basketball, our team chemistry is so important. And, and they're learning game by game. That's what the players and the coaches have been saying. So um, I think it's all about taking it game by game. We'll see where it takes Nigeria at the end of the competition. Let's move away from basketball now and talk about the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Uh, the list is officially out for the World Cup qualifiers against Liberia and Cape Verde. Uh, prior to the list uh, coming out, issues surrounding the UK-based players uh, won't be able to go and play uh, in Cape Verde. And uh, the NFF have found a solution uh, to that. But that's the list uh, for you, starting with the goalkeepers, uh, the usual suspect, Francis Zor, Daniel Akpei, and Maduka Okoye, who is expected uh, to uh, play in goal in all of those games. Our defenders are the same old guys. Uh, Gennett Ross sticking with all the players. All his dependables are uh, Chidoze Wazim, Leon Balogun, Alalua Ina. There's also Abdullah Ishewu and Kevin Akpoguma. In midfield, the same guys as well. Wilfred and Didi, Ogenekaru Etebo, Frank Uyeka, and Joseph Aydele Aribo. The forwards are Ahmed Musa, the captain, Samuel Kalu. A bit of a surprise is in, on this list. There's also Kelechi Yanacho, uh, Moses Simon, and Paul Onoachu. And the replacement players, the players that are going to replace uh, the UK-based guys when they return after the Liberia game are Terry Murphy, Chijoke Ejuke, Chidera Ejuke rather. There's also Valentine Ozonwafo and Kingsley uh, Michael from Bologna in the Syria. So uh, there you have it, Austin. I'll come to you to the, with this list uh, quickly. First of all, uh, any surprises for you? Do you see any player missing who you think should have made the list? And do you think some have made the list and have no business on it at all? I think it's a decent list. And if you look at the core of the list, um, Gannon Raw doesn't really take much risk with his list. You know, mm. you can see his regulars in there. You know, if anything goes wrong, he knows the people to you know jump on to yeah. you know get a job done for him but but um yesterday last night on um the show we um the guest uh bolu omoni uh mm. brought up the name of anthony wakeme who is doing big things in turkey uh with okay. traps on sport and i looked at it and i thought yeah maybe you know but he's been given a chance and probably didn't take it yep. uh, but you would ask questions why he's not being called to the team because is a decent striker and scoring. Yeah. But if you also look at the front line, you're available to coach Gano draw you struggle where it fits in. But just to put out there that he's loved so much that the fans made a statue of, of him right there at Traps of Sport. Mm. You know, but um, I'm, 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 I'm concerned about, okay, first, I'm excited about the guys returning to the team. I, I think it's about time we see Daniel Akpanyi again because he's had a decent season uh, last, last season with... Um, Kaiser Chiefs, Kenneth Omeru is also good to see him, but Kevin Akpogamo is one player that I think we also need to really watch this Super Eagles team because I see his quality 
And um, what we're yet to see with the Super Eagles, there's some you know, flashes of it, but we need to see him play more. I'm also excited about Frank Oyenka. We saw what he did with Brentford. If I write from FC Midland before moving to Brentford, he's been showing some level of consistency. So he's one of those players that I want to, you know, really look out for and see what, what he can do with this Ganotoros team. Um, those seven others that are on standby, because it's, it's likely that the situation won't change. Uh, the, the British government, they're not bending. Those red zones that they mentioned, uh, they can't allow players to go there and then come back to the country. So uh, we must start, you know, thinking of ways that will deal with that. And they get tired. Yep. It takes us back to what I said with basketball. We need to keep building at home because mm. if we've got players just like Algeria, you know, Algeria will not think about this two times. To an extent, Egypt won't. To a larger extent, South Africa won't. So we must keep giving attention to the league, develop the league, get Coach General to believe in it more, you know, put more yep. investment into it so that when situations like this come, we we'll, won't we'll, we'll have our hands on the cheek. Mm, interesting. There's also a bunk innocence on that replacement uh, shortlist. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Nigerians not heard uh, about uh, him. He plays uh, for Malmo. Uh, in Sweden, a defensive yep. midfielder. Um, I don't know, I mean, what can you say about that? Well, it's, of course, it, you will always, at some point, you will always give some people the opportunity. Chance, like yeah. uh, we said about Wankeme, he was doing in Turkey and, uh, and he got his opportunity, he didn't take it. Mm. This is, another, this is an, an opportunity, opportunity that is presented to For innocent, uh, innocent to yeah. those time. Let's see. If he will take it, um, but if he will take it, he has opportunity because he will be slotting into if uh, the likes of um, um, Didi will not be playing yeah, that game. That will be the that England, opportunity. Yeah. Will be good. So mm. let's see if he will take it and mm. like, give something, a like, cover mm. to uh, Indy, the likes of Indy when he's not available. As so, so, so when, um, before the list came out, uh, a lot of people were worried that the UK-based players were going to miss out on the World Cup mm -hmm. qualifiers with two games. Uh, but... Uh, based on the scenario that we have, uh, which is uh, that the, the game is being played in mm -hmm. Lagos against mm -hmm. Liberia, like, mm -hmm. Nigeria is not on the red list yeah, for the yeah, UK, well, so they, they can have, afford to play uh, this UK-based players against mm -hmm. Liberia, mm -hmm. then afterwards they can go back to That's their clubs and use a different, not a totally different set. It's just fixing that. Well, I think just for fixing. the UK we have about five or six yeah, of them. About you seven, know, eight of them, they're about them, and they've listed the replacements for them. So, but what, what are you thinking uh, in, in the drop off in quality? Do you think? Yeah, it is, that will it affect. Right? No, the, of course, it will. The, uh, not in quality. I'm just saying. Of course, the the the, the problem mean, we might have is you know that you know that um, the UK based players they they have been the nucleus of the Super Eagles team. always mm -hmm. for years now. They've been the nucleus. So what it means is that uh, bringing when you have to bring in another some set of new guys to. Mm -hmm. Uh, fit to, to take up their roles, that means that it might affect, and it might affect, um, let me say, the consistency of the team in terms of, of uh, you know, playing, to, uh, of being able to play together and all that. And you, you know that even the team on that general, with the usual suspect, the regulars playing together, we still have a problem with the fact that uh, they, they don't play like a team at times. Mm. You know, you ask, keep asking questions, why is it that... Um, that the, this this team is always playing as if they, they just they, they were just brought together mm -hmm. in 24 hours and has to go uh, face an opponent. So uh, I think that will is my worry, especially when those guys uh, go back to England and we have new set of players. Mm. Uh, if we can complain, if uh, football, uh, fans, Nigerians can complain about uh, this, the regulars when they are playing that uh, they, they they seem not to be playing like a team. You know. Imagine you can imagine having, what will happen when you now have, um, you know, uh, uh, some guys, you, new guys mm. coming to the team. Mm. All right, Austin, your last words are, obviously not your, like, final words are, because there's still uh, many days uh, to do a preview of these games uh, subsequently. But your, word, your last words on this uh, list before we move on. Yeah, um, with, with the Super Eagles and this qualifiers, I, I don't have a problem, Tayo, you know, because 
Uh, this is the Super Eagles of Nigeria, but uh, it's important that when a new player is invited to the team, we always remind the technical crew that we need to see them. So if you invite us to Bonke, I know he plays good football with Momo in Sweden, and he's a good defensive midfielder. Would like to see him, would like to see Kings to Michael, would like to see some of the guys that you haven't played before. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying we should take risks because an important assignment is the World Cup qualifiers, you know, but they're professional. When you bring them out here, let's see them so that our persons won't ask questions when you get to invite them again. Austin, you know what I'm going to say to that? Uh, General obviously likes to stick uh, with his uh, players, his regulars. No risk whatsoever taken. But now he doesn't have a choice because those guys will be returning back to your bases after the game against Liberia on September the 3rd for the next game against Cape Verde four days later. Anyways, so that's it for the Super Eagles uh, updates uh, for now. Of course, there's still going to be many more uh, stories concerning the team uh, moving forward ahead of those two crucial games. Uh, let's go on to the UEFA Champions League now and uh, bring you the draw, uh, the group stage draw that was done uh, yesterday. Some very interesting fixtures to look forward to. Man City will be taking on PSG and there's a very good chance that Cristiano Ronaldo will be facing off against Lionel Messi again. Of course, that deal is not done yet, but uh, we're told it's very, very close uh, for Cristiano Ronaldo to leave Juventus uh, for the Etihad Stadium. Group A, that's it. Man City, PSG, Leipzig, and Club Bruges. While in Group B is Atletico Madrid, Liverpool, FC Porto, and AC Milan. Group C has got Sports in Lisbon, Dortmund, Ajax, and the Schicksters, while in Group D, there's Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Shakhtar, and Sharif Tiraspol. Uh, the debutants uh, will be very glad to have a giants of the competition like Real Madrid coming to their country. In Group E, is Bayern, Barcelona, Benfica, and Dynamo Kiev, while in Group F, European League champions, Villarreal, Manchester United, Atalanta, and Young Boys of Switzerland. Group G has got Lille, Sevilla, Salzburg, and Wolfsburg. While in Group H is the defending champions, Chelsea, the old lady of Turin, Juventus, Zenit, and Malmo. All right, which, I mean, I can see, I can feel you, you, you I mean, you, you're champing at the beat for the competition to start already. Of course, uh, you know, this is uh, the lucrative, you have a Champions League, mm. where the big boys, uh, even though, I looked at, uh, it's something really changing, but I don't want to play the devil's advocate What's this that? time around. I just say, uh, something, you know, I, I, when I saw uh, the lineup, and maybe for some groups, I, uh, I had to remember the call for the Super League at some point mm. when the, the big boys were saying that uh, there's need for a Super League sort of, mm. because, you know, some names. But definitely, one thing that you have a Champions League is going to offer for some of this, the likes of Sherry, mm. and you know, is that um, it will give them uh, money in the bank, you know, yep. money in the bank and some exposure. Mm -hmm. And one other thing is that uh, some of their top talents might be snapped away due to that <laughs> because of that. But but the good thing is that it's it's a it's a with the. That there's no way you will have a balance there. But in terms of quality, you you look at the, the, the groups that, that some of them have mm. you know, greater quality and balance than you know, some. Mm. For example, uh, how do you, if you look at Group A, where you have Man City, Paris uh, Saint-Germain, uh, Leipzig, Club Bruges, you could say it's a big balance. Club Bruges doing well in Belgium mm. and all that. And uh, Group B too, Atletico, Liverpool, Porto, mm. um, then AC Milan. AC Milan is back. They had a fantastic season. Are they? They lost it. Yeah, they, Are they? what they did last season. <laughs> um, they just uh, oh, maybe um, inexperience cost still them, or they were just um, anxious for nothing. At some point, mm. they lost it, and Inter had to slip away, and Inter took over. And uh, you know, for Group C, Sporting, Dortmund, Hayes, Besiktas. Um, I has again, they're back, but uh, not the old ass that we no, used to know. Not. And uh, yeah. they're just uh, group, B, group D, Inter Milan, Real Madrid. So, and, uh, you know, Sharif, you yeah. know, you ask your question. Yeah, Sharif. Who's, who's uh, gonna, yeah, Sharif. Is, I hope they are not the weeping boys in that oh, well, that's, that's what it looks like, but you never know. I mean, you don't expect Sharif to be Real Madrid and Inter Milan. Let me go to Austin quickly. Austin, uh, well, what, what do you, which group do you think uh, is the toughest uh, from this lot? 
You're talking about Group B, right? I mean, uh, from the lot, so we, which is the toughest group. I mean, uh, we, we, the group of death. We, which one are you going for? <laughs> of the style, that's, uh, that's Group B for me. It's just demonic, you know. I wow. think the draw, you know, started you know, looking decent right after Group A and B. Um, anyone that would be quick to say it will be easy for Manchester City and PSG, I take a laugh because you've not been following uh, European football in the last three years to know that uh, RB Leipzig has been nothing but decent, you know, mm. and with the sort of money that Red Bull has put in that team, um, they can just actually, you know, uh, be destiny spoilers, you know, no disrespect to Club Bruges also. Uh, this is this is, this is is top flight football. So, Group A for me is very tricky. Group B is demonic. Then from Group C <laughs> to H, started getting <laughs> you started getting, you know, a little, a little bit, you know, all right. But um, um, just some wake up, wake up, um, uh, call for Bayern Munich and Barcelona in that group E, and then also with what we saw last season, uh, Borussia Dortmund got us talking, FC Porto got us talking. We got to the quarterfinals. They can just, you know, want to consolidate, and that makes Group C an interesting group also. For Manchester United, they must be careful because Villarreal can actually upset anybody anytime they want to play football. And Atalanta, as I remember, I think two seasons ago, they got you and I really talking with the kind of yep. football they were playing. So Manchester United, they are in a group that they must be very careful. They must be able to, you know, get points away from home if they want to, you know, either top that group or get out of it. And so uh, it's the UEFA Champions League. We're glad it's back. Champions Chelsea also cannot afford to be complacent. Mm -hmm. um, they might just see UV as the only threat, but they must also know that Zenit St. Petersburg has got rich experience in this competition and can actually pull an upset also. And same with Malmo, no disrespect to the Swedish side. So I, with the UEFA Champions League, you know, it is what it is. You, you never say never until uh, you get to that position where you know you're competing for for the, the, the trophy. Remember what Ajax did also, I think two years ago, that we were wondering what were they proving with the kind of football they were playing. And yes, yep. they did play, you know, good football. And when they lost it, we could tell that they lost it fighting so yeah i'm glad that the, the draw is done now we're just waiting for action uh to commence and um we will come here and we'll talk about it indeed they are waiting for action to commence so march day one is going to be on the 14th and 15th of september can't wait for that to come already Mauricio pochettino of course is delighted. I don't know whether he's delighted, but he's been reacting uh, to uh, that particular draw that has seen his team paired with Manchester City again. We also get to take our reactions are coming from some of the club officials as well as UFR uh, guests. Also, which is special, I think uh, Manchester City is one of the best teams in Europe. Uh, they are fighting in, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, trying to win the, the competition, the Champions League. Uh, like Paris, and of course, uh, I think it's important to to know that. But uh, in the same time, to respect uh, uh, the another team, Leipzig and, and Bruges, uh, um, you need to deserve to win. You need to work for that, and, and of course, it's going to be tough. Uh, a group really, really tough. Yes, I think it's for us. It's okay. Four good teams in one uh, group, but I think it's uh, there's a chance for us to uh, go through this group stage and perhaps to win this group and uh, it's okay for us. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, draw and it, uh, we expect a lot of uh, uh, interesting games and uh, we all look forward to Champions League start again. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's football and uh, everyone want to win so uh, they have to uh, do their homework and uh, go out there and perform. Welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. Um, apart from conducting the group stage draw for the UEFA Champions League, uh, UEFA also uh, gave our awards, uh, end of season awards, uh, to deserving uh, players. And I don't think there's too many people that would disagree with a lot of those choices, starting with the men's player of the year, which was uh, given to Jorginho of Chelsea and Italy, men's coach of the year, Thomas Tuchel of Chelsea, men's goalkeeper uh, of the year season uh, is Edouard Mendy of Chelsea in Senegal. Defender of the season is Ruben Diaz. Midfielder is N'Golo Kante. Forward, Erling Haaland of Norway. 
and Borussia Dortmund, the Women's Player of the Year. Uh, the ladies there were not left out as well to Alexia Patelas of Barcelona, Spain, our Women's Coach of the Year, Luis Cortes of Barcelona. They went on to win the UEFA Champions League for the ladies goalkeeper of the USCL season, Sandra Panos of Barcelona, absolutely dominating uh, the women's uh, category at the UEFA Awards. Austin, Gide, any issues uh, with these winners? If not, let's move on I quickly. Think that, I think good. But, but the, the one um, you know, mention, remarkable mention is that of Edward Mendy. Mendy. Fantastic from um, and, grass to grace. Grass to story. grace story. You know, just yeah. how he moved to, you know, he was almost out. Yeah, almost Down and gave out up on and football. gave up on football. Mm. And he just came in and right now he's been celebrated. Mm. Goalkeeper of the season. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. And African What's, uh, as well African, too. African yeah. uh, historically or mm. in recent memories having uh, produced uh, the greatest of goalkeepers. So to see Edward Mendy uh, representing the continent is just awesome. Austin, what about you? Uh, any issues uh, with the winners? No. You know, no. I was already, you know, that was the biggest secret out there that Georgina was going to get it. We were only giving Kante a chance because of the quality of, of football that we saw him play last season and to an extent with France at the Euros. But what a year it has been for uh, Georgina. I mean, three titles under, three European titles under three months. Mm. It, some clubs are even begging to just win one. And, mm -hmm. and one man is getting three, you know. So, <laughs> uh, well, well deserved. But for me, I love the fact that somehow Ellen Haaland got into that mix, you know, because he's also a very decent, you know, Why player, you know. For, so it was good to see him win the fourth of the year award. And, and I'm, I'm pretty cool what happened with the women's category also. Uh, mm -hmm. So no, no, no surprises here, Tayo, you know. It, it's all about... Uh, those that have been impressed, Chelsea dominated that list. That's why they are European champions. And to an extent, uh, Manchester City also. And that was why they, you can tell they won the league and also yeah. made it to the final of the UEFA Champions League. Yeah, your sports on Austin. The uh, reason I asked is because uh, award seasons are usually very uh, controversial and topical. No one ever seemed to agree uh, with a particular choice, uh, but it looks like uh, this particular one, uh, UEFA got them um, sports on the coach of the year. Surprise, surprise, is Thomas Tuchel. Of course, he's very delighted to have won the award as a Chelsea manager. What an impact that he's had in a very short space of time, taking over from Frank Lampard and leading Chelsea to the UEFA Champions League title. Let's take a listen to his star post-award reaction. Sorry that I cannot be there in person due to travel restrictions, but uh, we are very, very pleased to receive the reward. I take it in behalf of uh, all my staff. I'm absolutely uh, delighted and uh, very grateful for everybody who supported. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe and... Um, all the best. There you go, Thomas Tuchel. What an impact is that as Chelsea manager in a very short space of time. Uh, deservedly named the coach of the year. Let's move on from the awards now to uh, these two transfer sagas that looks like uh, uh, might be approaching an end very, very soon. I'm talking about Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, looking like he's on his way to Manchester City and Kylian Mbappe on his way to Real Madrid. Uh, let's start, first of all, uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo. We're hearing um, Juventus and Man City are in talks after the Portugal captain told the old lady management that he wants to leave the club this summer. I'm just going to let you know, there's no time to, uh, to, 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 to waste some more time on this story. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, the rivalry, uh, the you just say rivalry. It's likely it will, the deal will, will go, will we'll go through. We'll go through because okay. the rivalry between Messi and Ronaldo continues. I don't know. I don't know. Because if he moves, that means that uh, he also um, wants to also create, uh, go back to England and, you know, create that cult-like... Um, mm. But what's going to happen to the red side if he moves to the Manchester City, the legacy? You know? we'll, find, we'll find out. Austin, mm. uh, we're going to give you that assignment uh, <laughs> when, if that deal eventually mm. goes mm. Uh, through. If you're going all out there to talk to Manchester United fans, what they really feel uh, about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo mm. moving to the noisy neighbours, mm. right? Mm. I think Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo's um, move to Manchester City will... will it, it sounds... 
exciting, but but on the other part of Manchester, some reasons to be worried because I'm just you know watching and wondering why Manchester United is not making a deal because this is branding right here, you know, and the second coming would have done a lot of you know good for the club. Think about merchandising, mm -hmm. think about the, the prestige of the club. I mean, he's, he's thinking of going to the other part of Manchester, you know? And this is a guy that in 2015 said, look, it was very difficult to go to Manchester City. So I'm wondering why Manchester United is not jumping at this opportunity. I don't know what's wrong. I'm just thinking. But, but then again, on the other side, it's exciting because if he moves to Manchester City, in the UEFA Champions League, PSG will take on Man City. We'll see Messi Ronaldo again, Tyler. Awesome, and we can't wait for that to happen now, but that deal is not done yet. Uh, if it's done, whenever it's done, we'll be letting you know on sports this morning. Austin, thank you very much uh, for your time on the show. Uh, let's do this again very soon. Always a delight, Tayo. Thank you. Cheers. All right, so let's leave Cristiano Ronaldo now. Let's quickly uh, touch upon Kylian Mbappe. Real Madrid have made an improved bid to sign the French striker from PSG. Uh, initially, uh, they offered uh, 100 and, um, 160 million euros. That's what they offered initially on Tuesday. Uh, but now they've come back with 180 million euros and 170 flat payments and 10 in add-ons. You said Cristiano Ronaldo to Man City will go through. How do you see this one panning out? Mm -hmm. Mbappe to Real Madrid. Yeah, that will go through good. as well? This, well, it will be good. It's good for Mbappe. Um, another egocentric player being sent uh, will be going to Madrid, uh, Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, immediately, um, PSG signed Messi, told them he wasn't <laughs> going to stay anymore because he can't imagine that the attention that he, that means Messi and uh, will be mm -hmm. getting all the attention. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's see how it goes for him. Yeah, that's where it goes. I think I would, well, I would love to see him play in Real Madrid. Of course, uh, to be fair so. to uh, Mbappe, is always uh, told the PSG hierarchy that he wants to play for Real uh, Madrid. And they actually thought the coming of Messi was going to change his mind. Nah, but that's not the case. He really wants to go. Uh, he's turned down three different contract proposals. And, uh, and it looks like he's going to be on his way to the newly uh, refurbished, uh, renovated uh, Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, the face of the Spanish La Liga in waiting, Kylian Mbappe. Uh, we'll see how that uh, deal pans out uh, in the next uh, 48 hours. Before we leave and close the show and look at the papers, our games will be played in the Premier League uh, this weekend. Uh, the big match is obviously between uh, Chelsea and Liverpool, and Romelu Lukaku will be looking to continue uh, his goals coming return to the Blues uh, when he takes on Virgil van Dijk and the Liverpool defence uh, later on this uh, weekend. Um, so many other games as well, too, but unfortunately, yeah. uh, we're out of time. Let me get yeah. a prediction out of you for yeah. that particular game. That particular game, uh, Liverpool-Chelsea. Yeah, mm. It's going to be massive. The key battles, um, Lukaku, van Dijk. Van Dijk. Yeah. Let's see how it pans out. Uh, Lukaku won his cup and... Um, uh, so far, they about, they've got they've uh, gotten maximum six points, points. maximum points, yep. and uh, Liverpool is at home. Yeah, Anfield, a fortress. Yeah, Let's see well. what that, the fans are back. Also, yeah. it's going to play a huge role in the in the mm. result eventually. Mm. Um, it's going to be a good, maybe a score draw or something. Score draw. Mm, All right. Expect goals in that yeah, game. What a way That's to what I would say. What a way to sit <laughs> on the fence. <laughs> That's what you did. It's so all good. Uh, Let's take a look at our papers before we go now. Complete sports uh, FIFA World Cup qualifier. Uh, NDD, Yana Cho, Sine, Top Ross, 30 man list. Uh, we've talked about that extensively uh, on the show. Riz James, bring on Liverpool. Yeah. Chelsea players cannot wait to face the Reds on Saturday. Ateta, how we can defeat Man City. That's another big game uh, for the weekend as well. To City, uh, Arsenal. Arsenal. I was winning that one. Ooh. I think it's going to be difficult for Arsenal. Arsenal. Okay. I, but I hope they are not as woeful as they were against Chelsea. Yes. Yeah, I just believe so that the last, um, they got their, maybe they've gotten their mojo back as a result of uh, beating West Brom. Because they beat West Brom. It's a huge step up in quality uh, uh, comparing West Brom and Manchester but, City. But, 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 we'll but, but, but there's a way they do when they play Man City too. I agree. Uh, Arsenal have got the time. players. I mean, Bami Young, Lacazette, these are top class players any day. I mean, All they, they got can raise them. They, they can raise, raise their game. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But City are favourites for that game, but then don't totally uh, count out, rule out 
All right, so now, sports and sound, next bit of review, a lot of stories concerning the World Cup qualifiers, the Super Eagles team list. Uh, Moses Simon uh, to miss crucial league one tie. There's also uh, Cyril Dessas being linked uh, with a La Liga side. Isaac Success, success completes uh, Udinese deal. Good to see the young man uh, moving on uh, with his career. Joshua's fight versus Yusik. Pay-per-view cost uh, revealed. Ah, uh, yeah, it's quite expensive. Uh, let me leave it at that. Sporting life is our last paper for review. Club admits it's a tough group. As reaction to Liverpool's group uh, in the year for Champions League, uh, the winner is Jorginho, men's player of the year. Like we said, Kane wants £400,000 a week uh, seeking wage, uh, uh, which reflects uh, the club's £150 million valuation uh, of him. And what a way for Kane to return to the starting lineup of Tottenham yesterday night. Scott two goes in the UEFA Europa Conference League as Tottenham advance into the group stage uh, they're getting to their opponents today. Jide, many thanks for coming Thank on the show much. again on a Friday. It's always great to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys uh, for watching as well. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy uh, the weekend as well. I am Taya Salam.